Hello there, dear viewer! Welcome to a very purple Skyrim build, somewhat inspired by the Scandinavian god named Thor. I think everyone knows Thor, although some people may imagine him as Chris Hemsworth. I say it's somewhat inspired uh, because I usually imagine Thor and Mjolnir as being much less purple. The thing is, this armor and weapon buff the lightning enchantments placed on them including the absolutely amazing summer mist enchantment called Stormbringer. The build has a lot of things going. There is zero cost destruction spell casting. Well, almost. Some master level spells will still cost you an entire one point of magicka. It has that enchantment which changes its effects depending on your currently equipped shouts. You can, for instance, reduce armor rating of your foes and apply damage over time whether you have marked for death equipped. It has several different ways of reducing shout cooldown time, making you rely on shouts much more than most vanilla builds. It has sick heavy armor perks punishing your enemies for hitting you, which pairs oh so well with the lightning shield shout from Thunder Child mod. It has OP modded spells and one OP anniversary edition spell. It has double enchanted extra item slots. I I'm not holding any punches with this one, so let's jump right in. Just by looking at the list of required mods, you can easily tell it is OP. Yes, that's the point. You know, God of Thunder. All the cheesiest destruction, one-handed and heavy armor perks from Valkyrie play a role and often combine with something else, so it might be difficult to retrofit the build into vanilla system. The build perks two crafting skills though, so add alchemy to that and you can probably do absolutely anything, even in vanilla. Even Star is here for the extra spell effectiveness granted by the Atronach Stone. Thunder Child has plenty of new shouts, we mainly use two lightning based ones, lightning shield and storm blast. The shield deals some shock damage to those silly enemies deciding to hit you. And eventually, once you have all the words and activate the pillar of the voice, it will also heal your magicka and stamina a bit when you are hit. Stormblast will channel a terribly destructive lightning on your next hit with a weapon. Both are great for the concept, and the latter is ridiculously OP, especially with our build, as it has rather short cooldown and with a total harmony perk we will heal all attributes each time we shout, and we will shout a lot. Apocalypse is used for the most overpowered spells, because I can Okatos Recital and Spell Twine, but also for a bit less overpowered but majestically cool Shock Nova spell. Odin is mainly here for the shocking strikes which enhances your power attacks with lightning explosions and Storm Hand which deals a lot of shock damage in melee range, but also after your destruction spells have their magicka cost reduced to near zero, you can happily abuse Orc's strength to relocate half your magicka to health and stamina and enhance your power attacks with extra damage and a chance to knock the enemy down. And Stalrim variants is responsible for the overly purple armor we are wearing. I also used modular clothing system to break up the purple a little bit with some belts and four shoulder cape and also to get an extra slot for enchantments. <clears throat> the material we make our gear out of, Stalnaisty, Stalnaisty, uh, the, 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 the shock Stalrim material, enhances all shock based enchantments placed on them and this buff includes all the possible effects of Stormbringer. The attribute spread is, sadly, an equal spread between the three. I say sadly because with your gear complete late in the game you will need much less magicka than this, so those levels will feel wasted. Still early and mid game we have a mix that is particularly annoying to optimize attributes wise because we want to cast spells often and power attack often and maces are slow and stamina hungry, which means both timing your strikes between spell casts and power attacking are going to be a little bit of a headache. You can bypass the problem by playing as a standard warrior until you get close to zero cost destruction spells, but that would be boring and wouldn't feel like a lightning based spell sword at all, well spell mace in this instance. So in the end, let's go with even spread and fix the problem partly with orcs strength spell. The race is the Nord for no other reason than Thor is a Nord 
Nordic mythological figure and the Nords are quite tall. A Breton would be better, not gonna lie. Well, actually, the Frost Resistance helps with stamina management and will get a further increase with the Alter Self perk and one Heavy Armor perk. So, the, the, yeah, Nord is okay for this one. The Standing Stone is Even Star Atronach, granting as an extra 30% spell effectiveness, used here mainly to increase the damage of destruction spells because I didn't feel like we have quite enough enchantment slots open for Amplified Destruction effect. And we can also worship Talos in Winter Sun to obtain some means of cutting the shout cooldown time and combine them with cooldown reducing effects from Valkyrie and Summer Mist. This will eventually lead you to the ability to chain shout, especially with the Thunder Child favor mechanics on top of all that. Now for the skills we have one-handed heavy armor, destruction, alteration, speech, smithing and enchanting. Obviously two crafting skills, yes, pure belly. If you want OP you need to grind. In one hand we take the maze perks, victory rush and power attack perks up to crater maker with valorous charge as a low priority choice. You will need it rarely and you can open every combat with ranged spells and simply wait for your enemies to approach you. Also valorous charge would take the minimum level required to complete the build up to 51, so be warned. Venting blows will reduce the armor rating of your victims, which you can stack with the armor reducing effects of the marked for death shout, especially if you just keep it selected with the Stormbringer effect on your mace. In this scenario, armor reduction granted by Stormbringer will be further increased by style nasty material, augmented shock perk in destruction and amplified destruction enchantments. Meanwhile, maces are good for stagger, they have the best stagger chance of all one-handed weapons, and you can give yourself an extra chance to induce stagger with all weapon attacks, not just power attacks, with unrelenting force selected when using a Stormbringer weapon. Cratermaker grants you a chance to knock enemies prone, and so there's a certain late game perk in heavy armor, so let's take a look at those. We take the entire left branch and the right hand branch up to and including elemental defense, which will combine with alter self racial effect and enchantment to create a character who sniffs at lightning and cold, rip the whirlwind and face of the mountain, punish enemies for hitting you by staggering them and even knocking them to the ground. Given you can do it to them actively with power attacks and your shock spells will eventually have a chance to lift enemies into the air, impeding their movement, you will see enemies incapacitated and helpless all around you at all times. It gets to a point when it's hard to determine which of your godly powers just messed them up and it is very satisfying. In destruction we take the entire lightning branch with the hellstorm at the top. Crackling sphere will lift the targets into the air when they are low on health and affected by your shock spells, which is all the time. Especially that the health threshold under which it triggers seems to be affected by amplified destruction enchantments. <laughs> Deafening shock will impede enemy spell casting and so will disrupting strikes in one handed, meaning this character is an absolutely deadly mage slayer among many other deadly things. Headhot's disjunction applies 25% weakness to an element of your current cloak spell to enemies affected by that cloak. Another increase to shock spells effectiveness is most welcome. Elemental Barrier will enhance our Lightning Cloak by another 25% extra damage. In Alteration we mainly want Battle Mage and Alter Self. The second rank of Alter Self requires 90 in the skill, which is a tad annoying because we won't have that many opportunities to level up the skill, as we mostly use destruction spells. Here's a suggestion. Use your armor spells to train the skill. Without Mage Armor Packs it will be a minor buff to your armor rating, but still somewhat worth it early in the game. If you can get the Force Bolt spell, use it often as well. It immobilizes affected enemies, allowing you to torture them with mace and lightning. Before your gear is fully enchanted, the Resist Elements spell should also be used frequently. It gives you 35% resistance to all three elements and poison, so it alleviates several annoyances at once and levels up your alteration. Battle Mage is a great help for this sort of build, empowering your spells by another 30% 
against enemies you have hit with your weapon in the last 3 seconds. Alter Self was used to first increase your health, Stamina would be a decent choice too, given the cost of your power attacks, but the better your gear, the less important it will become to power attack. In fact, with your highly improved Stormbringer, it is often better to go for normal attacks. So in the end, some extra health will be the best choice. The second rank goes into increasing both fire and frost resistance. Shock resistance would seem like a natural choice, but with the finished build you will have said resistance from wearing heavy armor and from your OP shoes easily reaching the cap. So let's invest in at least this little bit of fire resist. Two. Now, in speech take all the shout perks, in the end with your final set of items, Stalos, Worship and all these perks here, you will decrease your shout cooldown with each power attack, have a 25% chance to immediately reset the cooldown timer each time you shout, and another 20% chance to reduce it to 3 seconds, and each enemy death within 40 feet of you will cut it by half. Also, the favor of Kain will reduce the cooldown altogether, and on top of all of that, there is blessing of Talos, of course. So many a times you will be perfectly able to use Storm Call and immediately follow with whatever shouts you would like to use. In smithing, we somewhat need to get up the heavy armor branch up to ebony smithing, as you can't really obtain the full set of style, well, shock style dream armor and weapons in any other way. You will also need to complete the same quest you need to do for Stalrim forging a new source of Stalrim. Naturally, since I had both smithing and enchanting perked, I made four fortify smithing items, bought blacksmith's elixirs and enchanter's elixir, and only then I proceeded to craft my ultimate set of items. The grind will definitely pay off, especially with the mace, more on that in a minute. In enchanting, we needed a minimal munchkin set of perks, so all the enchantment and enhancing perks and extra effect. No need to worry about weapon charges, because one summoner's enchantment can make them essentially inexhaustible. So now for something completely broken. Our gear! The mace deserves some special attention. First it has shock damage wild enchantment, which deals slightly less damage than vanilla shock damage on most hits, but 1 in 10 hits will result in a terrifying 5 times the normal damage. With max enchanting and elixirs and the 25% bonus from style, shock style rim, this damage will reach 130 per hit, and every now and then it will spike to 650. This is already quite cool, but the Stormbringer is the one we really are after. It will deal another 87 shock damage and apply another effect dependent on your currently equipped shout. With Ice Form, for example, you will freeze your targets now and again by simply hitting them. With Marked for Death, you will reduce the enemy armor rating and apply some DOT. With the Disarm shout, you will get a chance to disarm, and with Unrelenting Force, a rather high chance to stagger. The kicker is, the probability and the magnitude of all these effects will be increased by the material your mace is made of, and by Augmented Shock perk, as Stormbringer does count as a shock effect. This is nuts, utterly flexible and stupidly powerful. Then we will wear a helm with deep breath and fortified destruction enchantment, armor of fortified destruction and windfall, gauntlets of fortify one-handed and recharge weapon, boots of fortify one-handed and resist shock, an amulet of fortified destruction and amplify destruction, a ring of resist magic and link health and stamina, and a big fine neck piece or a cloak or cape, whatever, extra item slot with Amplified Destruction and Shalidor's Shield. You can see from the list that I am using one item above the vanilla limit. It is a clothing item, so it can hold Amplified Destruction. It would be a sin not to do it, really, it would be. The same cape or neck piece will hold the Shalidor's Shield effect, which in our case means 40% damage reduction when casting a spell, like any spell, and you will cast spells all the time, they, they always. So this damage reduction is counted separately from armor, we'll have the armor rating capped, obviously, so in the end this little neck piece can make us very tough indeed. The windfall enchantment on our armor will be very OP for us, with a chance to heal all attributes by nearly 120 points every 3 seconds, but depending on your exact combat style and spell choices, fortify alteration could be a good idea too. The ring will offer 30% magic resistance to stack with another 30 from alteration 
Expedition Packs and possibly another 15 from Agent of Mara ability should you choose to complete the required quest. This is just 10% short of the cap without being a Breton, so it seems generally worth it. Another effect on the ring is Link Health and Stamina. This one can be hard to get after level say 25 or something into that vein. Start visiting your general merchants and the Solitude Tailor as often as you can. You will get it eventually. You can also add my little Summer Mist add-on with guaranteed locations for all Summer Mist enchantments to your load order. The effect buffs your stamina by a quarter of your health and your health by a quarter of your stamina. Combined with the Orc's Strength spell, it fixes the overinvestment in magicka that is necessary to have your mid-game smooth. Before you can have double enchantments, you should focus on fortifying and amplifying this to action, fortifying one-handed and possibly some extra stamina for power attacks. Here is the list of the most useful spells for this build near its completion. Early in the game Crackle and Sparks can be quite fun, Chain Lightning and Runes as always can be fun and useful too, especially that you will need one rank of Rune Master anyway. Obviously Shocking Strikes, Lightning, Cloak and Orc Strength should go into a Katos Recital to have them auto cast for free at the start of each fight. Do not use Orc's Strength before your destruction spells are dear to cheap or at zero cost, or you will mess up your entire combat style, so be warned. Go with Resist Elements as your third recycled spell then. The Master Spell of Fingers of the Mountain combines remarkably with a Storm Call Shout. Fingers of the Mountain will deal extra shock damage of 505 each time an enemy is hit by a shock spell, which includes lightning from Storm Call. Unbounded Storm is a rather exciting anniversary edition slash creation club spell, which will deal a bit of shock damage in melee range and hit further away enemies with random little lightning strikes. The damage by itself isn't all that much, but it offers a fantastic opportunity to apply the crackle sphere effect to multiple enemies, especially with a wall of storms or shock nova in your other hand. Shock nova is a neat apocalypse spell dealing, in our case, 170 points of shock damage in a circle centered around you and twice that amount to enemies exactly at the edge of that circle. Holding unbounded storms up in one hand and repeatedly casting shock nova from another is a good way of dealing with your enemies if you don't feel like aiming and whacking and all that other primitive nonsense. As one point of magicka is the most you will ever spend on spells late game and you will be rather hard to stagger, some master level ritual spells can also come into play. Lightning Storm and Lightning Fury were the ones I opted for most frequently. Fury deals less damage than Storm, but requires less aiming, so it's a good choice for when you are surrounded. For a large part of the playthrough, your main combat choice is going to be a good Stormbringer or Shock Damage Mace and Storm Hand spell, which is quite a good combo on itself, especially against the Dragon Sand spellcasters. Remember to alternate between the spell and weapon strikes, both to preserve some stamina and to make full use of your Battle Mage perk when it becomes available. Since the build is already utterly cheesy, why not use some spell twine too? I added the heal effect to Storm Hand Wall of Storm and unbounded storms. As I find these three universally useful and uh, they were my most go-to spells, and Storm Hand at least is available pretty early in the game. So now you heal yourself and get 40% damage reduction when casting those three spells. <laughs> yes. And lastly we have uh, Shouts. These include two amazing Thunder Child ones, one giving you a super powerful lightning boon to your next weapon strike and the other punishing your enemies for hitting you on top of the severe punishment they take from heavy armor perks. From the vanilla shouts I am only listing the ones that, in my humble opinion, produce the most interesting results with the Stormbringer enchantment. So Ice Form, Marked for Death and Unrelenting Force. To wrap up the build, remember about the Blessing of Talos and consider getting the Dragonborn Force ability. With your many ways of reducing shout cooldown you can use Unrelenting Force very often, so why not make it 
stronger. The path to the next meditation of force without effort can also be considered. It will stack with the heavy armor resist to stagger and improve the stagger you incur when power attacking and attacking with a Stormbringer weapon with unrelenting force selected. Lastly, Seeker of Sorcery can help you with reducing the last remaining one point of magicka that sometimes will be the cost of your most expensive spells. So yes, uh, this is a perfectly balanced and immersive build. No power gaming here. What are, what are, what are you talking about? Get, get out of here. Yes, I know, your damage resistance will exceed the armor rating cap. You will punish enemies uh, that try to hit you with stagger, shock damage, knocking them prone and the near constant occurrence of crackle sphere lift off while stun locking them. Yes, 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 you will be able to shout extremely frequently with highly empowered shouts. Yes, your spell will cost nothing while dealing heaps of damage and combining with each other. Yes, on top of all that you will also get the flexibility of the Stormbringer within the more general flexibility of the spell sword playstyle. Yes. Yes, you will heal yourself when shouting and when casting your favorite spells. Yes, most enemies will die before you even have the chance to whack them with your perfectly balanced mace. Yes, it's all, it's all for immersion, guys, it's immersion. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that is that. Remember to like subscribe, share, or leave a comment, or all, all of the above, and, and consider a donation via Subscribestar, link in the description. Uh, also, also, I would have almost forgotten, my friend PC Outcast is also a remarkable Skyrim character builder, and he once made a remarkable Thor build. That was a few years ago, when I was just starting my YouTube uh, thing project, so the link to that wonderful PC's build will also be in the description. Anyway, by the way, hi PC, thanks, thanks for all your hard work for Skyrim community. Now, I am getting rather fatigued, so we will see each other again, guys. Bye, bye, bye. Jugglers and singers require applause. You are a gamer!